I'm Rose Jones, Mayor of Doncaster, and I would like to welcome all here today. Before we commence, I would like to outline the domestic arrangements for the meeting. Due to COVID-19, I would like to remind all present of the requirement to maintain social distancing rules and wear a mask, unless medically exempt, whilst moving around the civic building. Masks can be removed once seated in the council chamber. We are not expecting a fire practice today. If the alarm sounds, please leave the chamber, then turn right and proceed down the stairway and through the emergency exit on the ground floor. The assembly point is in the public square in front of Cass beyond the fountain. Anyone with mobility issues should wait in the refuge area near the lift and use the intercom to call for assistance. This meeting will be recorded and published on the council's website. By entering the council chamber, you are accepting that you will be recorded and your images will be retained and broadcast by the council. If anyone intends to record today's meeting, please ensure that this does not disturb the conduct of the meeting. Please ensure your mobile phones are switched to silent mode. Thank you. I will now commence the meeting. So, item one, apologies for absence. I've received an apology from Councillor Joe Blackham and Councillor Rachel Blake. Are there any more apologies, please? Thank you. Okay, item two, exclusion of the public and press. Appendix B with regard to agenda item nine, acceptance of Sheffield City Region Brownfield Housing Fund grant for council house building phase one and two is not for publication as it contains exempt information by virtue of paragraph three of part one, schedule 12A of the Local Government Act as amended. Therefore, if cabinet wish to discuss this information, the public and press will be excluded from the meeting whilst members deliberate in private. Members of the public will be invited back into the meeting after deliberations are concluded. Is that agreed? Thank you. Item three, public statements and questions. We have no public questions today. So I move to item four, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? No one's indicating, and therefore we move to item five, decision records from the meeting held 8th of September, 2021. These have been previously circulated and are for noting only. Agreed? Thank you. Item six, Exhort Selective Licensing Scheme. I'll now invite uh, Deputy Mayor Councillor Glyn Jones to introduce this item. Glyn. Thank you, Chair. The Housing Act 2004 provides local authorities with a discretionary power to designate an area for selective licensing. Selective licensing is a scheme that requires most private rented properties in the designated area to be licensed. Designations last for up to five years. Doncaster currently has an active scheme in part of Edlington and the previous Hexthorpe designation ended in 2020. In order to make a designation, there must be a clear and demonstrable case for doing so. The number of private rented properties in Hexthorpe is almost twice the national average. The evidential basis for the proposal is to redesignate Hexthorpe as an area for selective licensing and is detailed in the consultative document and justification report 2020. Uh, the cornerstone of this proposal is whilst the private, private rented sector accounts for just over a third of properties in Hexthorpe almost two thirds of the reported antisocial behavior is associated with domestic properties uh, and is attributable to the private rented sector. It is proposed to designate the area of Exthorpe as defined on the map at Appendix A as an area for selective licensing for a maximum period of five years. If designated, all private rented properties within the defined area 
subject to statutory exemptions will require a license. The Council have considered other options to address the problems in Hexthorpe before bringing this proposal for a further selective licensing scheme forward. Uh, it is considered that making the designation and adopting a revised strategy for its implementation will lead to a reduction in antisocial behaviour when combined with other initiatives taken in the area by the Council and its partners. The intention of this proposal is to directly address the problem of antisocial behaviour in the private rented sector where landlords are failing to take appropriate action to address tenant behaviour through management of the tenancy. In basic terms, the intention is to continue to improve and set a minimum standard for tenancy management within the private rented sector. South Yorkshire Police strongly support the proposal and consider it will have a positive impact on Hexthorpe uh, and the nearby areas and businesses. They consider that the implementation of the proposal will offer a number of positive benefits including an improvement in the social and economic conditions in the area, reduced antisocial behaviour, an improvement in general housing conditions a reduction in deprivation and a reduction in crime. The representations made during the consultation are summarised in the report. All the responses, representations and comments received during the consultation have been considered. The actions and proposals arising from the consideration of the representations and comments where required are detailed at Appendix C. Whilst it is proposed that the new scheme will be administered and monitored for compliance and enforced exclusively by the Council, we would like to take the opportunity to recognise and thank our delivery partner HomeSafe for the contribution they made to the success of the previous Hexlop scheme and continue to make with the existing Edlington scheme. Going forward, it is considered that by operating the next phase of selective licensing in Hexthorpe entirely in-house, we can ensure that sufficient resources are provided to effectively run the scheme, enforce conditions and ensure a consistent approach is taken against any breach of license conditions. The Council understands that selective licensing alone is not the answer to all the uh, issues prevalent in Exthorpe. The Council will continue with its coordinated approach in connection with dealing with homelessness, empty properties and antisocial behaviour by combining licensing with other courses of action available and by combining licensing with measures taken by our other partners. Reintroducing a selective licensing scheme in Exthorpe will assist in the reduction of antisocial behaviour known to affect the area, improve the management of privately rented properties and focus the improvement of Exthorpe as a whole. I commend this to Cabinet Chair. Thank you. Colleagues, any questions, statements? Nigel. Thank you, Chair. Um, just really, it's more of a comment more than anything else. Um, obviously, I fully support the continuation of this initiative for the people in the, obviously in the community of Exthorpe. Um, but I also think it's, it's, it's worth noting um, around the consultation that's to come place because it does appear to be quite widespread, thorough, and, and this has been done over a sustained period of time, which is, is really pleasing. So, fully support it, and the, I'm particularly impressed with the consultation and how that's gone. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other comments, please? Uh, I think if you look at uh, the reasons for the recommendations and the options that's been put before us today, you'll see that there is clear evidence that certain types of antisocial behaviour in Exalt are significant and persistent, with the majority of it being directly associated with the private rented sector. 
and it is considered that making a designation will, when combined with other measures taken in the area by the council and its partners, lead to a reduction in the identified problem. And therefore, we've got the options before us today. The recommendations are there, which is option two. Colleagues, are people happy to uh, accept the recommendation of option two, which is to make it a designated area? Therefore, all of the recommendations as down there, which are as follows. The cabinet resolved to make a selective licensing designation for the area shown on the map. The designation will be made on the 15th of November 2021 and will come into force on the 1st of March 2022. To adopt the model conditions set out in Appendix D to be applied as appropriate to each individual property on a case-by-case -case basis. Two, the scheme to be administered, monitored for compliance and enforced exclusively by the Council. Three, the licence fee to be set as out in Appendix E with the Part 2 fee being payable prior to the licence being granted. A discount of £50 will be applied to the Part 2 fee for membership of a recognised body as detailed in Appendix E and that licences will be issued on a pro rata basis if a landlord requires a licence after the start date of the scheme. The cost will be reduced annually on a sliding scale to reflect this. Is this moved? And seconded. Recommendations are therefore agreed. We therefore move to item seven, uh, the Gypsy and Traveller Sites Investment Strategy. I'll now invite uh, Councillor Glyn Jones to introduce this item. Thank you, Chair. Cabinet is asked today to approve the planned investment programme for the three Gypsy and Traveller sites owned by Doncaster Council and operated by St Ledger Homes. This strategy seeks to ensure that as a council we meet our statutory obligations to provide an appropriate number of Gypsy and Traveller pitches and that pitches are well maintained and include appropriate amenities. According to government guidance, such amenities need to include a hot and cold water supply, electricity supply, separate toilet and hand basins, a shower stroke bathroom and a kitchen and dining area. Across the three sites, of which two are in Wheatley and Intake Ward and one in Thorn Ward, it is proposed to balance the availability of pitches with the demand for them. This will result in a reduction of seven pitches in White Towers, leaving a total number of 16 pitches at this site. It is proposed to retain the same number of pitches at Land's End and Little Lane. Overall, we will retain 48 pitches and this is considered to be reasonable be a reasonable number to ensure that as a borough we comply with the applicable national planning regulations. Across the three sites the type of works planned may include alteration works to the electrical, water and waste services to each plot, provision of new amenity blocks, construction of new plot boundaries, landscaping and hard standing works to individual plots, construction of new pedestrian pavement and resurfacing of the access road, renewing existing boundary fencing where required. Because of the scale of these works, planning consent will be required. The works represent a considerable undertaking and as a result, it is planned to undertake them over a two year period with completion in 2022 stroke 2023. I would ask the cabinet to support the recommendations in this report, Chair. Thank you. Colleagues, any questions, stroke statements, please?
Chair, I'm delighted to see that we are meeting our le legal obligations. By doing this, we're ensuring there are sufficient pictures for our Gypsy and Traveller community and that are of a required standard uh, within our borough. We all know that we have to meet our standards uh, out there for our Gypsy and Traveller community. These proposals are being brought forward today to ensure that the standards are complied with. And therefore, if no one else has got anything to say, can I ask members to look at the uh, recommendations that's there? And that are that Cabinet agree a two-year investment strategy is put in place to carry out the improvement works across the three Gypsy and Traveller sites, starting with White Towers and following on with Little Lane and Land's End site. And also to simply ensure that the standards are brought up to appropriate standards. And this means that the estate roads, of course, will be brought up to appropriate standards and will actually reflect the estate roads that they're actually buffeting onto. Is that moved? Is it seconded? The recommendation is agreed. Item 8, uh, I will now invite Councillor Ball to introduce this, which is a public health research programme, Born and Bred. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you, Chair. This is a, this is a, a, a good news story for Doncaster um, in, in terms of, obviously, this initiative. Um, the public health team within Doncaster Council led a consortium recently of partners and applied for the Government Local Data Accelerator Fund for children and families. The, this application, entitled Born and Bred eCohorts, creating a network of local intelligence tools from linked local data was successful and the consortium has been awarded just over £810,000, with the funding allocation to Doncaster being just over £292,000. Locally, we're already working well in partnership, led by Doncaster and Bassett Law Teaching Hospitals, to develop our born and bred in Doncaster birth cohort. We expect to recruit our first family in the winter of this year, this funding will accelerate our work, especially around data linkage and stakeholder involvement. It will bring together learning from other born and bred sites in Wakefield, Leeds and also Bradford. Midwives gain consent from women during routine appointments to link broad ranging routine data about themselves and the baby and over time and for the future contact for this research. This permission is granted. Studying children from birth before is a powerful way of understanding the main influences that shape our lives. The data provided from this cohort study will help Team Doncaster gain a better understanding of what local families want and need from services across the borough in all our areas. This study was based on the award-winning Born in Bradford cohort, which has recruited 12,000 children some of whom are reaching the 10th birthday now. Born in Bradford has been able to investigate issues that are important to local people, practitioners and policy makers. And a recent study has examined air pollution, specifically exposure to polluted air during pregnancy and respiratory illnesses. This evidence was used to influence local decisions on, for example, reducing pollution around schools and areas. In time, our cohorts will be able to influence similar issues and impact people across the Doncaster Borough. So it's a good news story. Um, obviously, this funding is coming forward for Doncaster, and this should be a long-lasting um, legacy, really, that we can take forward. So um, I ask Cabinet to approve this report, Chair. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Any questions, statements? Lani and then Andrea. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it, it is a really good news story for, for Doncaster that this research, this research has come here to our towns 
Um, and this sort of like cradle to grave approach to that research, it can help shape our services and, and, and track our health needs over a prolonged period of time. And I think just at this moment in time, post COVID, um, it's very beneficial that we have got um, a strong focus on tackling them health inequalities and promoting inclusion across the borough as well. Thank you. Andrea? Yes, I echo colleagues in acknowledging what a, a great piece of work this is, how good it is to see research being conducted in Doncaster, so, so thank you for that. Um, it's also good, of course, that this research is founded on listening to the voice of lived experience, which is um, so important. Um, can I just ask you, though, um, you highlight in, in what you've said to us about this, about this being inclusive, every pregnant lady is invited to participate, but what if... Uh, certain groups underrepresented in the sample. Thanks, uh, Councillor Robinson. So, with uh, all uh, research programmes, obviously um, uh, entering into a programme is entirely voluntary. So, the two general approaches we take one is to make sure that all um, information about a research programme is available and is communicated as effectively as possible to make sure there aren't any uh, barriers in that. And to help us do that, we're piloting the National Institute of Health Services Research um, uh, Race Equality Framework, and we're one of the few councils in the country to, to start doing that. So that's about making sure everyone gets as much access. And then the second thing that all research programmes do is they're very careful about what conclusions they draw depending on who's in the in the sample. So uh, if we were to see a, a number of families, maybe from the Gypsy and Roma traveller community that you just talked about that weren't in the sample, we would need to just be very careful about what conclusions we were drawing about that. And if we were so minded, we would want to look at other ways of encouraging those people to be part of the, the survey or to get their views to help us shape services going forward. So. Uh, it's good to have the research, but it shouldn't, shouldn't be seen as a panacea. We should always be asking ourselves, are, uh, are, you know, is the widest range of people in Doncaster engaging with the survey and the research? And if not, why not? And what might we do about it? But hopefully that helps give you some assurance about the approach. Uh, no one else is indicating. And, you know, I am delighted to see that it is focusing on health inequalities and inclusion throughout the borough and should actually help us over a period of time to reduce these. So thank you for that. So if we look, uh, the recommendation is Cabinet agreed to accept the grant and that Dongster Council act as the accountable body to administer the full award of 810,360. People, someone happy to move that? Seconded. Therefore, the recommendations are agreed. Thank you for that. We now move on to item nine, which is acceptance of Sheffield City Region Brownfield Housing Fund grant for Council House Build Programme, phase one and two. And I would remind everyone that Appendix B, if they wish to uh, discuss it, we need to actually ask for that to be held uh, in camera and then members of the public would be brought back for the deliberations. So I'll now invite Deputy Mayor to introduce this item. Lynn, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, £40 million in funding uh, has been allocated to South Yorkshire Mayoral Combined Authority to support housing developments which demonstrate a financial viability gap through a brownfield housing fund. Doncaster Council has submitted funding bids in order to support the viability of sites identified for development as part of the housing, uh, Council House Build Programme. The award notification for the first schemes is scheduled for later this month and it is anticipated that the final grant awards for remaining schemes will be notified in February 2022. This report seeks approval that delegated authority is granted to the relevant directors to accept the Brownfield Housing Fund grant offers from the South Yorkshire Mayoral Combined Authority, enter into the associated funding agreement and subsequently 
draw down the grant funding for delivery of the schemes. Doncaster Council will seek to maximise investment in new homes and pursue its share of the £40 million Regional Brownfield Housing Fund. I commend this to Cabinet Chair. Colleagues, any questions, statements? So, uh, Mark first and then Phil after. Mark. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, very much welcome um, to these projects uh, delivering affordable housing um, within the communities and also um, a decent higher quality environmental standard um, for thermal uplift, um, including electrical vehicle and charging points. So it actually taps into the obviously the environmental strategy that we're pushing forward at the council. Uh, so I do welcome, um, extremely welcome this, uh, these projects. Thank you. Phil. Yes, I too um, <coughs> welcome the report. Um, I mean, this will deliver um, over 150 um, properties. Um, uh, the um, exciting thing about it is it shows that we can build new homes, part of the uh, Mayor's pledge. Uh, there's a huge demand for new homes in Doncaster, but we can build them in a sustainable way. Uh, we can build, uh, ensure that we are not eating into um, uh, green space when there is brownfield land that can be reused and recycled and redeveloped. Um, it will contribute construction jobs to our local economy. It'll add social value and reduce waiting lists. Um, I think this is really important um, for the um, local economy and for to meeting local housing needs. I'm delighted to see this. This is actually utilising the land that's available and doing it for the benefit of our residents, bringing forward more affordable homes. So uh, I'm delighted to put the recommendations to you and seek uh, to get your approval. And the recommendations are that Cabinet endorse the approach taken with Brownfield Housing Funds grant bids to support Council House Build Programme and the five-year housing delivery plan. Delegate authority to the Director of Economy and Environment in consultation with the 151 officer and portfolio holder to accept the funding and agreed terms and conditions for any Brownfield Housing Fund grant awards for council house build schemes in phases one and two. Utilize the funding to maximize the delivery of new homes across phase one or two of council house build program and support the identification of further opportunities across the borough that are eligible for Sheffield City Region Brownfield grant and submit initial gateway expressions of interest applications. I will now that it's moved from Sheffield City Region to South Yorkshire Region. Are people happy to uh, move that recommendation, please? Seconded. Therefore, the recommendations are approved. Thanks very much. So that now concludes the items of business on the agenda today. I would like to thank everyone for their attendance today and for their input. Before vacating the chamber meeting room, can I ask that everyone wears a face mask whilst vacating the meeting room? I will now close the meeting. Thank you.